Hello beautiful souls. And so today we are gathering to recognize that I am at home. Fear is a stranger here. When I am at home in the heart of God, which is where I am, fear is stranger here. For our home is love and perfect love casts out fear. So I'm excited for today's lesson and to see what is brought forward within us and through us with this as our intention for today. So lesson 160, I am at home. Fear is the stranger here. <laughs> fear is a stranger to the ways of love. Identify with fear and you will be a stranger to yourself. And thus you are unknown to you. What is yourself remains an alien part. Nope. What is yourself remains an alien to the part of you which thinks that it is real but different from yourself. Hmm. Who could be sane in such a circumstance? Who but a madman could believe he is what he is not and judge against himself? Hmm. There is a stranger in our midst who comes from an idea so foreign to the truth he speaks a different language, looks upon a world truth does not know, and understands what truth regards as senseless. Stranger yet, he does not recognize to whom he comes, and yet maintains his home belongs to him, while he is alien now, who is at home. Perfect. So what is the stranger that is in our midst? It is the ego, this thought, this idea that we could possibly be separate from God. And what is more fearful than thinking that you are separate from our creator? Fear, the ego, right? So the ego we are recognizing is the stranger. Ego is a stranger. Fear and ego are synonymous. And so fear truly is the stranger. And so when we think that our home, physical home, is our own and that is our place of home, then we are alien to the truth of what we are. We are alien to the truth. But when we recognize that we are at home, which is an inward condition, an inward experience, home is in the heart, is when we realize that we are not alien at all to the truth, but the truth is with us and can be with us no matter what it may look like in the home of form. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And yet how easy it would be to say, this is my home, here I belong, and will not leave because a madman says I must. <laughs> What reason is there for not saying this? What could the reason be except that you had asked the stranger in to take your place and let you be a stranger to yourself? No one would let himself be dispossessed so needlessly unless he thought that there was another home more suited to his tastes. That's it. It isn't until we recognize that there is another home that is more suited to our tastes where we can stand firmly and say, I am no longer going to be a stranger here. I am no longer going to allow a madman to tell me that this is not my home because our home is in the heart of God. And therefore we can never leave this place and in our declaration that we truly, truly want to be home in God, so are we and the madman, the stranger, the fear, the ego is gonzo. It is gonzo. And so? Who is the stranger? It is fear or you that is unsuited to the home which God provided for his son. Is fear his own? Created in his likeness? Is it fear that love completes and is completed by? There is no home can shelter love and fear. They cannot coexist. They cannot coexist. If you are real, then fear must be an illusion. If you are real, then fear must be an illusion. And if fear is real, then you do not exist at all. Look at that, eh? There are no contradictions in God. There are no contradictions in truth. Therefore, either we are perfect love as God created us to be, or we're not. And if we are not the love as God created us to be, then we are fear, but fear is the illusion. So, hmm, what are we really? It only leaves us one option. Thank you, God. And as it says clearly here, how simply then 
The question is resolved. Who fears has but denied himself and said, I am the stranger here. And so I leave my home to one more like me than myself and give him all I thought belonged to me. Now is he exiled of necessity, not knowing who he is, uncertain of all things but this, that he is not himself and that his home has been denied to him. What does he search for now? What can he find? A stranger to himself can find no home where he may look, for he has made return impossible, impossible. His way is lost, except a miracle will search him out and show him that he is no stranger now. The miracle will come. The miracle will come. For in his home, his self remains. It asked no stranger in and took no alien thought to be itself. And it will call its own unto itself in recognition of what is its own. That's it. So when we think we are lost without a home and we think that fear is natural and normal for us, then literally we are a stranger to our home. But we are being reassured that the miracle will come. And the miracle allows that shift to happen from fear to love in order for us to be in the state of love, which is knowing ourself and the call to its own self so we have recognition of the truth in what we are. <laughs> Who is the stranger? Is he not the one yourself calls not? You are unable now to recognize the stranger in your midst for you have given him your rightful place. Yet is yourself as certain of its own as God is of his son? He cannot be confused about creation. He is sure of what belongs to him. No stranger can be interposed between his knowledge and his son's reality. He does not know of strangers. He is certain of his son. And I think this is a crucial point. God knows us not as fear egos. God knows us not as bodies. He knows us as eternal souls that he created. He knows us as his son. And so when we are trying to communicate to God through fear and praying to take something away from us, God won't hear our call. God hears the call of the heart, which is where our home is. He hears the call of our soul, which is an, a prayer of gratitude for what is already our own. So God is certain of his son because he created us. We are the ones who created the idea of fear and the possibility of separation. So we are the ones who have to choose otherwise, to choose the truth as God created us to be instead of what we think we created ourselves to be as these bodies, as this fear, ego. His certainty suffices. His certainty suffices. Who he knows to be his son belongs where he has set his son forever. He has answered you who ask, who is the stranger? Hear his voice assure you, quietly and sure, that you are not a stranger to your father, no is your creator stranger made to you. Whom God has joined remains forever one, at home in him, no stranger to himself. Hmm. Today we offer thanks that Christ has come to search the world for what belongs to him. Today we offer thanks that Christ has come to search the world for what belongs to him. His vision sees no strangers, but beholds his own and joyously unites with them. They see him as a stranger, for they do not recognize themselves. Yet as they give him welcome, they remember. And he leads them gently home again where they belong. This is also key, that Christ knows himself. So when he looks out into the world, he sees brothers and sisters in Christ. He doesn't see a stranger. So even though we may have not met that physical body before, within that physical body is the Christ that we know very, very, very well in certainty and with God. 
So it, it's clear here, there are no strangers here, only family, <laughs> only family in the kingdom and the family of God. Not one he, he forgot, not one does he forget, there we go, not one does he forget. Not one he fails to give you to remember that your home may be complete and perfect as it was established. He has not forgotten you. But you will not remember him until you look on all as he does. You will not remember him until you look on all as he does. Who denies his brother is denying him. And thus refusing to accept the gift of sight by which his self is clearly recognized, his home remembered, and salvation come. And this is why Christ's vision is the miracle, because then we see the Holy Son of God in all that we previously thought were strangers or that we previously thought were different than us or had done something to us or that we had done something to someone. We literally get to see the same self in all of us because we truly are one self as God created us to be. So it's beautiful. I am at home. Fear is the stranger here. I am at home. Fear is the stranger here. And so it is. Enjoy today's lesson, beautiful souls. Bye.